it does take some thought and some control over the, the direction that the land can take. Otherwise, yeah, it'll all be high priced condos, which I think is not, it's not, it's not just good for anyone here. That's not what we want. It's not what residents will keep them here. That's Angie Gabo. She's with the resident led nonprofit Woodbridge Neighborhood Development. On this edition of Your Daily Detroit, we're checking in on what's new in this historic and beautiful corner of town. It's one of Detroit's older neighborhoods, with people moving in starting in the 1870s. It's named after William Woodbridge. He was the governor of Michigan from 1840 to 1841, and much of the neighborhood sits on what used to be his farm. It contains some of the best examples of early 1900s homes in the city and an eclectic mix of dedicated residents. In recent years, it's gotten new restaurants and is dealing with the impacts, both good and bad, of skyrocketing property values. So let's get started with episode 357 of the Daily Detroit podcast for October 14th, 2019. I'm Jer Stays. Here's my colleague Sven Gustafson with that conversation. Oh, and before we get started, thanks to our members on Patreon who are a big part of making this show possible. You can join them at dailydetroit.com slash join. Joining us by phone is Angie Gabo. She's executive director of Woodbridge Neighborhood Development. Angie, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. How are you? Very well. Thank you. All right. So Woodbridge Neighborhood Development uh, is a nonprofit. I know you guys have been around for a while. You've got a lot going on there, uh, but I wonder if you could first kind of just tell us a little bit about the organization and, and sort of what you guys work on. Sure. So we're a nonprofit development organization, uh, resident-led. We've got a board of directors that lives here in the neighborhood, and I live here as staff. Uh, All our staff live in the neighborhood, actually. Uh, We've been around since the early 2000s, working on housing primarily and community development issues, um, trying to create a um, a more livable, um, healthy place for people who've lived here, many, many folks who've lived here for a very long time in this neighborhood. So started doing things like cleanups and board ups of vacant houses and more recently um, have started some major renovation projects for sale renovations and helping um, lower income residents with minor home repair grants. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, you guys have partnered with uh, another community development organization out of Lansing. Uh, they're called Sinair Solutions, right? Is this a, is this a new partnership? It is. Uh, it's been, well, a couple of years now. So Sinair Solutions uh, is a what they call a CDFI, Community Development Financial Institution, basically a, a nonprofit bank that works on affordable housing and other community development issues. And they partner with, they wanted to partner with a group that was on the ground, had people in the neighborhood who knew what was going on here and what we wanted to do for on behalf of, of residents. So we teamed up. They have a lot of the real estate expertise and um, and the banking side, and we have the residents on the board and and people who come to meetings and express themselves loudly. Uh, and so um, I think it's a good it's a good partnership to get work done in the neighborhood. So we've we've started taking on uh, some joint projects uh, where we're looking to activate a couple of buildings that have been idle uh, in this neighborhood for a long time, a school building Mm -hmm. and an old bank. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we also are looking to involve residents in planning what will happen to a a big area of vacant land that was um, uh, owned by, uh, previously owned by Detroit public schools, but never had anything on it uh, for a long time. Yeah. Um, Well, let's, let's go through some of those properties. Um, I think the Probably the best known is the the former bank building that you mentioned, which people will know. It's on uh, Grand River Avenue uh, at the corner of Trumbull, and it's got the uh, the really playful, fun mural of the giraffe that is saying "Welcome to Woodbridge." Uh, That's what's, great. What do you have planned there? Right. So that we kind of call that the giraffe building because it's just for lack of a better a better name right now, and everybody does know that mural, uh, Carl Oxley the Third mural. Um, so that's a former bank building. Uh, what we're looking to do there is to bring in uh, tenants, probably nonprofits or small uh, businesses in the upper two floors. The building is not in, in uh, terrible shape. It's in pretty good shape, actually. So we're going to um, kind of shine it up a little bit and bring it up to, to current code and then bring in tenants to, um, to have offices in those upper floors. Mm-hmm. And the first uh, floor... We're looking for uh, some kind of a commercial tenant, maybe a food and beverage um, 
uh, to come in there and serve the community. We had a little community event earlier this year where we got ideas from neighbors about what they would like to see there, what kind of businesses they would support there. Um, and we think that that uh, area has the potential to to draw a lot of people who live in the south part of the neighborhood and also North Corktown, um, where there isn't really a walkable maybe restaurant uh, nearby uh, or bar or something like that. So we're looking for a tenant to come in there. We're probably also going to have our offices in that building. So we have presence in that part of the neighborhood as well. I read that you're looking to invest $1.2 million uh, to renovating that building. Talk about the money and where that comes from. Is that where Sinair Solutions comes in? That's right. So it's an internal, they call it an internal developer. They're going to be the developer on it. We already have uh, an agreement with a contractor, AGI Construction out of Southwest Detroit is our general contractor on the project. Um, So yeah, they'll self-finance that, right? If that makes sense to folks. So um, in that case, we're not using uh, grant funds or anything like that for the renovation. It's a construction loan, but they basically make it internally. Um, and then, you know, the the rents will pay back that loan basically for the construction on mm-hmm. that on that space. So 1.2 million. I know that sounds like a lot. It's actually not a a huge number for no. a for a hundred year old building um, to get it back to where it needs to be. Right, and that's a three story uh, building, right? Right, right. And totally vacant right now? It's totally vacant right now, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, you also mentioned uh, a former school. This is the Hancock School off of Rosa Parks Boulevard, right? Right. It's Rosa Parks and Hancock. So between Grand River and and, uh, Forest, uh, if that that makes sense. Or actually north of Forest, just north of Forest. Hancock is a block north of Forest. Um, So that was a a former uh, Detroit Public Schools uh, middle school. And and then after that, in the 80s and 90s, was a charter school for a little bit, um, but has been basically abandoned, open to trespass. It was owned by a private owner for a while. And, um, you know, we were able to acquire that and and some land nearby because of this partnership we have with Sonera Solutions. And so it's a really exciting opportunity, I think, for the community to come together and think of what um, what they would like to see happen there. Mm-hmm. Primarily, I mean, the first thing that we did was clean up the space and get it secured and clean it up because it's it's been overgrown and um, sort of a magnet for some uh, kind of bad stuff happening around here. So sure, it was sure. really good to get it into community hands, get it cleaned up. And now we're just now tipping off a planning process with neighbors to figure out what would they like to see there and how can we how can we make that happen and we do have some grant funds that we've raised to help move that process along what kind of uh uses do you envision for you know it's an it's an old elementary school right like what what could you what could you turn it into wow there's so many different possibilities that things that we have already heard from from um, from residents, but also others that we've talked to about reusing these spaces. There's a real need for maybe early childhood uh, seats in this area. Uh, so maybe it could be some, at least some of the youth could be, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a preschool or some sort of daycare facility. Um, mm-hmm. There's also sort of co-working and makerspace type things where there's people who are looking for lower cost options to have their offices or move out of home offices. Um, there's, uh, you know, I think there's some other ideas about just community space generally, um, that we don't really have in this area. Like, for example, our offices are not even in the neighborhood now because we don't have a space to, to be in with our staff. Not a lot of office space in the neighborhood that I'm aware of. Right, exactly. And yet we're real close to, to downtown and midtown. And so maybe we could offer that sort of a, that sort of a space. I think there's a, the sky's the limit in terms of what, what the needs are, um, and what, what could happen there. So we're putting together this process where we're looking at what people would like to see there and then what, what the market is for, for either businesses that are trying to find a space or a, you know, an institution like a daycare or early childhood facility. How does that work in a place like that? Finally, you've got all this vacant land, uh, eight acres, I think, right? Is that adjacent yeah. to the school? It's right across the street, uh, west of Rosa Parks, Rosa, and between uh, Grand River and um, uh, Forest. Right. So what are you looking to do with that, all that vacant land there? So what we're doing with this planning process is we're, we're, uh, we've hired MKSK, a, a, a national planning firm that has some local partners here in Detroit. And they're going to help the community think about what we're calling development guidelines. So we're not going to be 100% prescriptive about what will happen there, but what we're putting together are 
guidelines for how whatever happens there, what it should look like and how it should interact with the rest of the neighborhood, how it should connect with the rest of the neighborhood. And and again, a lot of feedback from neighbors about what they want and don't want in terms of types of housing um, and types of businesses, maybe that if there's a, a building built, what kind of businesses would move into the ground floor commercial spaces, for example. There's a real priority around here on on figuring out what the missing housing piece is. We have um, some, we have very, uh, housing prices are rising rapidly. Rents are rising rapidly in this area. So how can we um, come up with a, a, a type of housing maybe that, that, that is more accessible for people living here now who may be renters and want to buy, but can't afford the prices that houses are selling for here now. So is there another type of housing, a smaller um, footprint of housing or townhomes or, you know, um, in terms of rent to rental housing, how can we meet a different need? So thinking about all of those kinds of things and then wrapping that into the development guidelines that we hope we'll have some control over because we have control over that land. Interesting. You know, I uh, I mentioned earlier that I used to live in Woodbridge about 15 years ago. Just a few years ago, I was planting trees over on my old block with the greening of Detroit uh, one Saturday morning. And I was really, I, I wrote about this on my blog, actually. I was really struck by how much the neighborhood had changed in the intervening years. I mean, there are bike lanes all over the place. There were just uh, lots of new residents. Um, I mean, that that neighborhood really, I, I had the sense that it was really on the up and up, but also that what I've read is that rents are rising and there are, are proposals to build these kind of like high-end luxury apartment housing units and things. I mean, it's a, it's a sought after neighborhood. It is. And so the, again, our priority as an organization to try to figure out how to maintain this diversity that you pointed to as a, as a real draw so that people want to be here because it has a lot of different kinds of people living here. And that's, what's interesting, makes it interesting. I mean, I have young kids here. In fact, my, I believe my son who was probably four at the time or something. And my husband were planting that day that you were over there. Cause he, they, we do those plantings too in the neighborhood and he was planting some of those trees. So, you know, that's doing those, that kind of uh, the nature of the neighborhood as a place that where people get out and do those kinds of things. And that there's a lot of different kinds of people here are what we're trying to uh, maintain. And so it, it does take some thought and some control over the, the direction that the land can take. Otherwise, yeah, it'll all be high price condos, which I think is not, it's not, it's not just good for anyone here. That's not what we want. It's not what residents will keep them here. What's the timeline on all this stuff? Like what, what can people look forward to seeing uh, happen first? So the giraffe building, we're hoping will be um, occupied and, and activated by the spring. Um, the planning process for the school and the land surrounding also will be completed by early 2020. The development, though, will, will sort of follow uh, that based on, you know, how we can market the land that's there or develop it ourselves or get the school popped up um, as quickly as possible. So I think we're, we're looking at a lot of activity in the summer and fall of next year um, for, you know, for everything west of, of, the, of the giraffe building. Yeah, sounds good. We'll uh, definitely keep our eyes on it and uh, love to catch up with you uh, later on as, as things unfold. Angie Gabo is executive director of the Woodbridge Neighborhood Development Nonprofit. Angie, thanks so much for catching us up on everything. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for listening. Also, a quick thanks for the two new five-star reviews on Apple Podcast. It's highly appreciated, and thank you for helping push Detroit's conversation forward. Take care of each other, and we'll see you around Detroit.